everyone. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz. And right here we have 18 cups of water. That's two, three tablespoons of white vinegar. And we're gonna come in with 300 grams of Knit Picks Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn. This yarn is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon. And you can see that we have a lot of room in here. And the goal for the today is to create some red speckles on a pink base all over, lots of movement, spread. There's so much water in here that the colors are going to spread a lot because in many cases the dye is going to hit water before yarn. So we aren't going to get super sharp speckles that we might see if we were using lower immersion. And I'm going to go put on my respirator mask, gloves, and safety glasses, and then we'll come back and talk about the dye. But if you would like to learn more about any of the tools and equipment that I use in these videos, like my four inch deep catering steam pan, these reusable nylon zip ties, the yarn, I do have affiliate links and blog posts talking about tools and equipment down in the video description. Okay, we are heating up. The heat level is still fairly low. I am currently wearing my respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves. And here we have our dye. This is some Dharma Cherry Bomb uh, mixed with, gosh, how much? Uh, mixed with two teaspoons of citric acid. The amount of dye was just the end of a fork full, but I'm now layering this fairly heavy, a little random, but you can see that we are both getting beautiful speckles here, but we are also seeing a lot of spread of the color right away. And that is because uh, there is so much space between the yarn and the water so that as we layer this, do sort of a fine layer all over, we're gonna have these red speckles on a white base. And we're gonna be adding more and more and more and building up this color as we go. And I'm even tapping my fingers in there. Now I could wait at this stage um, <laughs> and give this some time to set, but I am not going to. I'm going to pick this up, flip it over with the citric acid in our dye. Things, you can see, things have actually started to strike really, really fast. And by moving the yarn and moving by moving the yarn, spreading things out, just sort of wiggling it around, I'm gonna bring the heat down to low. This is gonna help us distribute this color all over. The one thing that is really, really important here is that uh, my hand is dry, so that way we can add our speckles. But this is a type of colorway that I really, really enjoy. And we will be moving the yarn a lot. But the goal is to get some reasonable coverage. And there'll be variation in it for sure. But I really enjoy uh, this type of effect. And it's a really great way. Um, it's a colorway, kind of colorway that I love to make, and it's honestly just a great way to use up a leftover dye from projects. And you could really stop at any, any point as well. But we're not really stopping here today. <laughs> we are moving, and this time, I'm going to lift this up and sort of open it up, or attempt to at least, 
to expose some of this interior. I'm going to do the one in the middle last because I feel like that's the skein. Whoops. Warm, warm, warm. That is the skein that is the most likely uh, to sort of get uh, not as much color. There we go. That one opened a bit easier. I'll make sure. And each time I'm moving the yarn, the goal is to make uh, some of this wider yarn more accessible and make the areas that are already nice and pink less <laughs> accessible. And then as we go on, uh oh, I hope I dried off. Yes, this glove was dry. As we go on, at this point, I'm going to be focusing the color a little more instead of going all over, which, I mean, we're still mostly going all over, but I'm also going to be focusing the color on these areas that don't have a lot of pink. Um, so instead of, so some of those areas that are more pink already, I am leaving them. And we're going to be moving this a lot and building it up. And so this, this means that it's not a huge deal if we have some areas that don't get very much color at all now because each time we move it, we will expose more, more yarn. But we are starting to feel very, very pink all over. And the act of even just moving the yarn is helping with that. And up oh, here is a big region. So this one I'm not even going to flip quite yet because we discovered an area that needs yarn. So not everything has to be treated exactly identical. But we are, we'll be looking for the palest areas each time we go about this. Doo -doo -doo -doo. And there's still so much dye. So then I can go a little bigger all over. I need more and more. This is a really, really pretty uh, pink. Even though it is a red color. Cherry Bomb is a color I like a lot. It is one I really, really like. Okay, this time I will move it like that. This time, uh huh. Move you like that. Looking for areas to open up and expose color areas with less pigment. <laughs> I will say it is a very, very humid day outside, which means that wearing gloves and this mask, whoo-wee, it is hot. But the good thing about this technique since it is fairly continuous, um, then uh, I'm not stopping and taking off the gloves and washing and taking off the mask. So that is actually something that this time works in my favor. Okay, let's pay attention around the ties themselves this time. I feel like I struck it a little too much in that last round, but I still think it is okay. Uh, there we go. It's funny how the edges really seem to not get as much color uh, as 
was more of the middle. But this is still going super well. And I don't mind if we have some white left behind. This is sort of giving us this beautiful tonal pink. Why do I feel like it's this skein that keeps getting uh, different amounts of attention? That is funny. Yes, I'm, I'm actually pretty amazed that this is as pink as it is. Okay. Here is a pretty big region there. Where is my zip tie? There we go. Aha! Aha! Okay, so there's a big region there, a big region there, and then you zip tie. Hopefully, you're not, oh dear, that is a huge area. Okay, zip tie management. Okay, we may have found some really, really big areas. What is it with that one? Feeling like it does not really fit in. We are starting to hit the dregs of what is left. So my first priority is in these regions of more white to help break it up. So at least if there are some paler sections, then, um, you know, it, it, it isn't as like, oh my gosh, this uniform pale section, even though that might still be the case. Um, and I can even come in here with some finger taps. Um, whew, okay, we've got just a little bit left. And actually, hmm, let's see if I, okay. Okay. Okay, I'm now gonna rinse my hands into the cup. Okay, and I dissolved what was left in like three cups of water. And I'm just pouring that on. <laughs> uh, and moving that through a bit. Ha! Huh. 15 minutes in the mask and I was dripping underneath it. But you can sort of get a feel in here with how things maybe could look if we had um, more of the dye and less yarn. We dyed 300 grams of yarn, which gave us these beautiful, beautiful pink speckled yarn. And it is subtle and speckled and fun. And so this could pair really, really well if I had speckled with this dye on something else. And it's just a fun way to go about some extra color. With some of the light and reflections, it can be hard to see some of the little specks, but they are there. So now what I'm gonna do is turn up the heat a little bit, get to a nice little bubble, and then I will turn off the heat, let the yarn cool off slowly here in the pan, so then we can wash it. Let's wash our yarn. Now, recently I have done a colorway similar to this, but using deep magenta on DK weight yarn. Um, I'm not sure the order of the videos, but recently, time-wise. And the hue is different. This is definitely a deeper, uh, more, definitely a deeper pink, and the deep magenta feels almost more like a cherry blossom pink. Um, this is definitely more reddish, even though it is still very pink. But we are seeing no bleeding at all. I used a little bit of some clear dish soap. I am going to rinse out the soap, put the yarn through my spin dryer, and hang it up to dry. Here is our very, very pink Leave No Dye Behind yarn. 
which I guess I'm not surprised that it feels pink, uh, but even the speckles from here do feel pink, which I suppose is part of the feeling of Cherry Bomb. And if I compare this to Deep Magenta, you can feel, I think, the difference here in the speckles. They are definitely way more red with the Cherry Bomb here than they are with the fluorescent fuchsia that I used in a different video. We were able to get some pink on all the skeins, but there definitely are some areas that are more pastel and then areas where those speckles are a little bit heavier. I think I would have been able to get more even coverage if I had used uh, less yarn in the pan, but this is sort of more of a tonal heavy speckles kind of yarn, and I love it. I mean, these speckles are just so, so fun. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I really hope you enjoyed this Leave No Dye Behind. I love this technique and getting some sharp speckles while also getting a wash and spread of color. I find it to be just really, really fun. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel and smash that bell icon to get notifications so you don't miss when I upload a new video. And I release new content at least twice a week, plus we have live streams and bonus content sprinkled in, and you really don't want to miss any of it. Technically, all three of these skeins are the same dye lot. I dyed them in the same pan at the same time. but. That doesn't mean that there's not going to be variation between the three skeins in placement and how they knit up. So if you're going to use all three together in one project, I recommend blending the skeins together so that way you don't see like a demarcation from changing from one to the next and maybe see like, oh, this one has fewer speckles and the other one has more. This feels faded, like an unintentional fade or like a different dye lot. So it isn't necessarily something you would see, but this is a recommendation I make for hand dyed yarn in general, uh, that there is gonna be just some variation and that is part of what makes the colorways magical. And so if that does end up happening in a project, then maybe it can just be a design element and there can be something beautiful about that. Uh, so I wouldn't worry necessarily, it's just a recommendation I would make. but. If you don't mind, um, if there's a little bit of inconsistency, you don't need to blend the yarn together. It's just if maybe you were doing two different sleeves of a sweater, you might want to consider that um, versus maybe the main body of a sweater. So just throwing that out there. If you love the yarn I dye in these videos and want a chance to bring some home, well, you can. Uh, in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop, uh, that is where most of the yarn that I dye in my videos ends up, and you can purchase some yarn featured in Dye Pot Weekly, Leave No Dye Behind, and some of my other videos. And it's a great way to get some beautiful yarn and support the channel at the same time. Um, other ways you can support content, uh, I do have a Patreon, but really the biggest way that any of you can support the content here is by watching and engaging with these videos, commenting, liking, things like that. And so thank you all so, so much for watching.